However, if there's one thing that I would like you to take away from this video, it's that lutein supplements do not prevent macular degeneration from happening for those that don't have it. They only benefit those that have already got macular degeneration, so if you're taking these to prevent it, then I would advise against it. In this video, we'll talk about which dietary supplements are the best for your eyes. I recently visited New Zealand and picked up a few supplements, but I'll be going over the ingredients within them so that even if it's not available where you live, you can still get the same benefits. Then without further ado, let's begin. First we have fish oil. This is a topic that I did a separate video on, so I would recommend watching that first. But to summarize, omega-3 fish oils are essential fatty acids, which mean that your body cannot produce them on its own. They must be consumed from our diet. They are great for people suffering from dry eye disease as it allows the body to control inflammation more effectively. Fish oils are known to have high levels of omega-3 fatty acids, so this is why they are sold in this way. In the ingredient section, you're looking for two compounds, EPA and DHA. For every 1000 milligrams of fish oil you take, you get about 180 milligrams of EPA and 120 milligrams of DHA. These are all the studies that suggest that fish oil has benefits in preventing dry eye disease and these are the dosages that the studies used. I know that you're probably not going to read all these papers, so I've done the maths for you. I've taken each of the sample sizes in each of the studies, weighted them based on how large they are in comparison to the total number of participants in this list, and applied that to the dosages that they used. In that way, you can find out the average amount of fish oil you need to take in order for you to have dry eye benefits. After a lot of number crunching, that number comes to 5,000 milligrams of fish oil a day for at least three months before you start seeing benefits. In other words, if you're taking 1,000 milligram capsules like the one here, you'll need to take about five capsules a day. However, you can also find 2,000 milligram formulations of fish oil, so in that case, you would take about two capsules a day. Do of that information of what you will. I just basically index the fish oil values similarly to how stocks get indexed on the stock market. It might not be the most accurate for your needs, so it's still best if you ask your optometrist about how much you should be taking, but it should be beneficial to most people. For all my vegan viewers that can't eat fish oil, you have the alternative of flaxseed oil, which has omega-3, 6, and 9. But don't ask me how much you'll need to take because there is still limited evidence regarding flaxseed oil, so I can't really give you an answer here. Next on the list, we have lutein. In a lot of eye supplements, you'll often find lutein as a main ingredient. But what is lutein and why is it so important? The short answer is it really isn't all that important for most of us. Lutein and zeaxanthin are pigments found in green leafy vegetables such as kale, spinach, broccoli, peas, and lettuce. They were used in the second age-related eye disease study in 2012 as a main ingredient to slowing down macular damage, and the results showed that lutein and zeaxanthin were in fact effective in slowing it down. The formula that they used consisted of 500 milligrams of vitamin C, 400 international units of vitamin E, 2 milligrams of copper, 10 milligrams of lutein, 2 milligrams of zeaxanthin, and 80 milligrams of zinc. I'll leave these values down in the description below and when picking up lutein products, always read the ingredients carefully because sometimes the values can vary, like this one that contains 20 milligrams of lutein rather than 10. You might be sitting there thinking, wait a minute, if 10 milligrams of lutein has benefits, then shouldn't 20 milligrams have double the benefit? You have to understand that most studies were done using 10 milligrams. There aren't any large scale studies that have used 20 milligrams, so at this point, no one really knows if 20 milligrams has a significant advantage over 10. However, if there's one thing that I would like you to take away from this video, it's that lutein supplements do not prevent macular degeneration from happening for those that don't have it. They only benefit those that have already got macular degeneration, so if you're taking these to prevent it, then I would advise against it. They are more effective to those that have intermediate or advanced macular degeneration and less effective for early macular degeneration. The way I see lutein supplementations is Think of them as insurance. If you have macular degeneration and you are already doing things like 
regular exercise, eating antioxidants and not smoking, but you would like to do more, then go ahead. At least you know that you're doing the best for your eyes because macular degeneration is irreversible. I know that if I had macular degeneration, then I personally wouldn't want to take the risk. Next on the list, we have bilberry. Bilberry is a type of blueberry that has high levels of antioxidants and the belief is that it should help with the following things. Healthy eye function and night vision. I'm sure antioxidants help with a lot of different things, but from doing some research, there is still very little evidence that shows bilberry doing any of these things. So I'm quite skeptical of bilberry being a good supplement for the eyes as the evidence is weak. However, a study done in 2012 looked at 332 patients that had glaucoma and investigated whether bilberry had any effect on their visual function. They had 132 people take bilberry extract, 103 people take Jinko supplements, and 97 people take placebo. They had them take 22,000 milligrams of bilberry a day, which is equivalent to about 60 milligrams of anthocyanides for 24 months. The results are as follows. On average, the bilberry group had an improvement in their visual acuity and their Humphreys visual field's mean deviation. That is to say that their vision improved as well as the symptoms of glaucoma lessening. The Jinko group showed no improvement in their visual acuity, but their mean deviation did improve. And the control group showed a worsening of vision and no differences to their visual field results. On the other hand, a different study looked at whether bilberry improves night vision of healthy individuals. They had 15 males aged between 25 and 47, 8 subjects received placebo, and 7 subjects received bilberry. The results were that there was no significant difference in their night vision. So from the published literature, we can see that bilberry, although they can help with some people, perhaps the ones with glaucoma, they won't help young, healthy individuals that may take it. But at least there aren't any known downsides. So if it's just antioxidants that you're after, then bilberry is all yours. Next, we have Vision Protect One A Day, which is a comprehensive eye formula with 15,000 milligrams of bilberry. The ingredients consist of a cocktail of plant extracts and vitamins. There are even ones that are quite familiar to us, such as beta carotene, bilberry, copper, lutein, vitamin C, zeaxanthin, and zinc. However, it also includes some other ingredients that may help with some other conditions, such as selenium. I think this may have been included because an article in 2014 stated that 200 patients with Graves' disease, those that had much bigger problems, were likely to have low selenium levels. I think this particular product may be targeted to those that are planning on buying something for their elderly family members that have an eye condition, but have no idea what problem they have, as it includes ingredients that may help with many different eye conditions. I am still skeptical as to whether a combination of multiple ingredients has any significant advantage over a targeted formula. We'll have to just wait and see if more studies get published. Just remember, when taking dietary supplements, as the name suggests, it should be supplementary to your diet, meaning these should never replace your normal diet or any other recommendations from your optometrist. But if there is one supplement that I can highly recommend to everyone just wanting good eye function, it would be fish oil. The evidence is strong on this one and I want to recommend it to everyone with dry eye issues. You're looking to take around 1000 milligrams of EPA and 600 milligrams of DHA a day, which roughly equates to about 5 milligrams of fish oil. In the case where your capsule is 1000 milligrams, like the one here, you'll need to take about 5 capsules, but if the size is 2000 milligrams, you should be taking about 2 capsules a day. But that just about wraps up this week's video. If you learned something new or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want to thumbs up back, then they'll be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.